Hi everyone, my name is Hagai Levy. I'm a PhD student in Ron Shamir's Dran Elkon's lab. Today I'm going to talk about one of our projects that revolves around computational methods for active module identification in biological networks. This work was published at the beginning of 2021 in the Molecular System Biology. In contrary to what the title of this work might suggest, this work encompasses more than just presenting a new algorithm. So without further ado, let's start with a little brief. In this work, we revealed a common problem in the active module identification world of overreporting and rich go terms. To tackle this problem, we devised the empirical pipeline, or EMP for short, a procedure for filtering out non specific go terms. To measure different algorithms based on the EMP calibration, we fashioned five novel AMI criteria. And finally, we present Domino, a novel AMI algorithm that outperforms six leading algorithms based on this criteria. So let's start by defining what AM algorithms are. So you can think about AM algorithms as a subcategory of the general model identification task, where we identify, quote unquote, interesting subgraphs in the biological network. In active model identification, or AMI for short, we pinpoint these subgraphs by assigning activity scores to the nodes of the graph. These activity scores are relevant to a specific biological context. So let's review the general pipeline of a typical AMI method. It starts by computing activity scores for our specific genomic profile. Then these activity scores are overlaid on the nodes of the biological network. Typically, an AMI algorithm rescores the node of the network using some computational technique, such as network propagation. And finally, it detects highly scoring modules. Now, in order to explore the biological meaning of each module, they are subjected to a functional enrichment analysis, commonly against the gene ontology, or GO for short. So this analysis yields a two-dimensional table where each module gets an enrichment score for each GO term. So when we begin our work, we aim to benchmark or evaluate different AMI algorithms based on biological signals they capture. And we decided to measure biological signals based on enrichment scores like we saw in the previous slides. Now, when we look at such table of enrichment scores, two questions come to mind. First, are these enrichment scores reflect reliable biological processes? And second, what is the quality of these biological signals? So let's start from the first question. How can we validate the biological signal? So let's assume that methods are evaluated by the number of enriched go terms in their solution. So we can take an activity score profile apply to an AMI algorithm and get a table of enrichment scores as we saw before. In our analysis, for each GO term, we chose to take the maximal enrichment score across modules and count how many GO terms pass the significance threshold. So let's take, for example, these two algorithms, A and B. A got 520 enriched GO terms, while algorithm B got 49. You might think at this point that algorithm A gives more comprehensive biological interpretation compared to B. But now let's assume that we take the activity score profile and permute it. So now the activity scores are completely shuffled. So what do we expect to see here? How many significant go terms? Since the activity score profile does not represent a real biological signal, we do not expect to see any enriched go terms or maybe just few very general ones. What we actually observed is that some algorithms indeed scarcely got any enriched GO terms, or just few ones, while others got many. In this example, the number of GO terms algorithm A got on permuted datasets is almost the same as the number of GO terms it got on the original dataset, with great overlap. We hypothesized that the phenomenon occurs due to some bias in the AMI algorithm, the network, the activity scores, or some combination of them. To correct this bias, we developed the empirical pipeline, or EMP for short. The EMP systematically filters out and rich go terms that comes up just by chance. What we basically do is comparing the true enrichment scores to enrichment scores that come from permuted datasets. So first, we generate thousands of permuted datasets that yields thousands of enrichment scores for each go term. Then, we can use these enrichment scores to generate a background distribution of enrichment scores per go term and use it to test 
How high is the true enrichment scores compared to the permuted ones? A goal term that has significantly higher true enrichment score compared to the background is called empirically validated goal term, or EV term for sure. So this EMP procedure has two main caveats. First, it marks goal terms in the solution level and not per module individually. Second, it is computationally heavy procedure and it could take even several days for fixing a single solution. After running several AMI algorithms with EMP, we gathered some insights about their strengths and weaknesses. We then turned to develop an AMI algorithm that has high rate of EV terms. We call this algorithm Domino. So let's briefly review the steps of Domino. It starts by dissecting the entire network into disjoint, highly connected subnetworks or slices using the Louvain algorithm. Then it detects which of these are relevant slices, that is, having a high proportion of active genes in it. Here we test for enrichment of active genes and correct for multiple testing with Benjamini Harbor false discovery rate. As it is an exploratory step, we use a lenient threshold of 0.3. Each of these relevant slices is then subjected to a refinement step done by solving a price collecting Steiner tree. And then it repartitioned to putative modules using the Newman Gilvan modularity algorithm. Finally, Domino reports as final modules only those who are enriched with active genes. Here we test for enrichment of active genes in a strict manner. The correction for multiple testing is done using the Bonferroni correction with threshold of 0.05. I would like to highlight at this point that Domino does not use the Go ontology in any of its steps. Also, note that step number one is done only once per network. As we mentioned before, EMP is a computationally heavy procedure. Therefore, in order to conduct a systematic benchmark in a reasonable time, we use the DEEP network, which is a small, high-quality global network. We also perform auxiliary benchmark on larger network, HUI and STRING. In the main benchmark, we evaluated six popular AMI algorithms and Domino, so seven in total, over 10 gene expression datasets and 10 GWAS datasets, resulting in 140 solutions analyzed by EMP. To get activity scores from gene expression and GWAS datasets, we compared p-values for the perturbation of the gene using EDGAR for gene expression and PASCAL for the GWAS. So how do we actually evaluate and compare different solutions? We fashioned five novel evaluation criteria that are based on empirically validated terms. It is worth to mention here that at least some of these criteria can also be applied regardless to the EMP calibration. In the next slides, I'll present each time some of the criteria and show the results. First, there is the empirical to hypergeometric ratio criterion, or EHR for short. In this criterion, we measure the fraction of EV terms compared to the total number of significant goal terms in the solution. In this example, we, the solution we got from algorithm A and algorithm B has the same EHR levels, even though they have different number of enriched goal terms. Next, in the MEHR criterion, we calculate the fraction of enriched goal terms that are also EV terms inside each module individually. For example, here module number 2 of algorithm A has an MEHR value of 0.5. To give an MEHR score for the entire AMI solution, we simply average the scores across modules. So in the main benchmark, Domino excelled in the EHR and the MEHR criteria on both gene expression and GWAS datasets. These results show that we can use Domino even without correcting it using the EMP procedure when the computational resources are limited. Next criterion is biological richness. Here we want to measure the diversity of GO terms in the solution. However, simply counting GO terms is not enough since multiple GO terms might represent similar biological processes. To deal with this issue, we use Revigo, a method for deriving a non-redundant set of GO terms using a semantic similarity metric and counting the resulting number of GO terms. To illustrate this, 
let's take a look on the figure here. Let's assume that the circles represent GO terms that were obtained by an AMI solution, and the distance between terms is derived from their semantic similarity. We can see that some of the reported GO terms are very similar to each other, that is, clustered together. In such a case, we count the entire cluster as a single GO term. Following next, there is the intramodule biological homogeneity criterion. Here again, we use the semantic similarity metric, but in a complementary manner. In this criterion, we expect to see homogeneity of GO terms inside each module, since each module is supposed to represent a concise biological unit. Using the same plot from the previous slide, we can think about the GO terms encircled in red as coming from the red module, and GO terms encircled in blue as coming from the blue module. Consider the average semantic similarity between GO terms, we may say that the blue module is more homogeneous than the red module, even though the blue one contains a higher number of significant GO terms. In the biological regions of the intramodule homogeneity criteria, Domino and Netbox outperform the other algorithms, with Netbox coming first most of the time. Finally, we measure the robustness of the solution, or how sensitive it is to missing data, in our case, activity scores. Specifically, we sum sample the activity scores, and we run our AMI pipeline to find enriched GO terms. We then repeated this process multiple times and compare the significant GO terms we got to the EV terms from the full activity score set, which is used as a gold standard set of terms. To compute robustness, we used both F1 and AOPR. Here we got consistent results in which Domino dominates on both gene expression and GWAS datasets. Here we can see the average runtimes of the benchmarked algorithms. As you can see, Domino's runtime is several orders of magnitude shorter than the other algorithms. For those who wish to correct the results using AMP, the runtime of the AMI algorithm is even more crucial, as the runtime of EMP is highly affected by the runtime of the AMI algorithm it corrects. Here we can see a summary of the results. As you can see, for most criteria, Domino dominates on both gene expression and GWAS datasets. In the auxiliary benchmark, we tested Domino and Netbox, another AIM algorithm that got good results, on larger networks, Huri and String. Here, too, Domino got better results. To sum it up, Domino, our newly developed algorithm, outperforms the other algorithms we benchmarked. We believe that the future work should be invested in understanding the causes of the AMI biases detected by EMP. A better understanding of these biases could yield a more efficient correction procedure and improved AMI algorithms. As I already mentioned, our work was published this year in the Molecular System Biology, and I encourage those of you who are interested to read more and get more details. Also, the code base of Domino, EMP, and the benchmark is freely available as three modular code bases in GitHub. On a final note, I want to thank all my lab members and of course my advisor, Professor Ran Shamir and Professor Ran Yelkon, for helping me to get this work done. That's all for now. Thanks for listening.